Developing at noon, major highway closures are getting set to take place this weekend, What you need to know in order to avoid a big delay. And the Arkansas travelers are getting ready to be under new management. We're digging deeper into the new ownership group coming up. And car insurance rates are on the rise again. We're sharing some tips on how you can save some money on your policy. Well, thank you for joining us in making THV 11 at noon your go to for the latest afternoon headlines. I'm Journey Taylor here with Chief Meteorologist Tom Brandon in for Nathan this afternoon. Hello. And Tom, we just have to pause real quick and say thank yeah. you for your hard work this week because oh. now our reward is this beautiful day. Right? Yeah, we deserve <laughs> this day. We'll yes. deserve Saturday and even Mom's Day on Sunday. Beautiful weather. Uh, the whole weather team working our way through the very active work week that we've had this week. But this is the reward. We get to enjoy sunshine. A few of those puffy uh, cumulus clouds out there with a secondary frontal boundary that's going to be nothing more than a wind shift line. Our temperature right now, Little Rock, is at 75. Lots of sunshine. Fayetteville, 72. 81 Texarkana. We're going to get close to 80 this afternoon. But here's the payoff for you. Mother's Day weekend is going to be absolutely stunning with low humidity values, pleasant conditions after a high today of 79, 80 Saturday, and Mother's Day looks beautiful as well, 81. But, you know, we've got rain chances back in the forecast. We'll take a look at those early week rain chances coming up here in just a few minutes. Journey, back to you. All right, Tom, thank you. Major highway closures are coming for a busy junction in central Arkansas this weekend. Starting at 10 o'clock tonight, they will be closing the I-30 ramp to I-40 eastbound. RDOT is painting the new expanded lanes at the I-30 and I-40 interchange. I-30 eastbound will be reduced to just one lane from Broadway Street up to I-40. So everyone needing to go east to Memphis or get to 67, 167 to Jacksonville will have to take the exit at Highway 107, then loop around on JFK Boulevard back to I-40. Now crews will then reverse and close the I-30 ramp to I-40 westbound. That means traffic going towards Conway or Russellville will have to go further along the highway and use the North Hills Boulevard exit to loop back around to go west. Now it's important to know it's all expected to be done before your Monday morning commute. So pack your patience if you're coming through this area. And for a closer look at detours, just go to our website. That's THV11.com. The Arkansas House and Senate are at odds over the Game and Fish Commission's bu budget. Thursday, the House fell 13 vo votes short of approving $175 million in state and federal funds for Game and Fish. The Senate worked to pass a new bill, but House lawmakers had already left the fiscal session. The legislature will need to come back in. The governor will call a special session for the specific purpose of passing a budget for the Arkansas Game and Fish. Right now, Game and Fish is funded until July, putting the commission in jeopardy if lawmakers don't return before then. The original uh, House objected to plans to raise the salary of agency director Austin Booth by almost $40,000 a year. A spokesperson for Game and Fish chose not to comment. The Arkansas Travelers are set to be sold to new owners. The team announcing today they reached an agreement to sell the team to Diamond Baseball Holdings. The move has been approved by the current board of directors and is pending other necessary approvals from Major League Baseball. Of course, with the team selling, there is speculation about if they could be moved. There's always discussion with that. I mean, we've been, I think back in 21, I was hit in the face with, if the mayor doesn't do this, we'll move to Bryant. Again, I don't own the Travelers. We, the city of North Little Rock, owns the stadium. I think it's one of the better stadiums anywhere you can go to as far as the new owners. I don't think it's their intent. The team will still be the double A affiliate of this Seattle Mariners and the entire front office staff will stay. The same ownership group owns several other minor league teams across the country, including two others in the Texas League. The Israel Hamas war appears to be entering a dangerous new phase with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu defiantly vowing that Israel will go at it alone if necessary to finish off Hamas. Netanyahu is pushing back against President Biden's warning to not launch a major strike against Hamas in the southern Gaza city of Rafa. President Biden said he wants to avoid mass casualties and pause the shipment of weapons last week.
If we have to stand alone, we will stand alone. The White House is pushing to accelerate humanitarian to civilians, humanitarian aid that is, and the first shipment of supplies left Cyprus earlier this week, headed to the new U.S.-built pier off Gaza. Former President Donald Trump's criminal trial in New York is resuming Friday, and the key witness in the case, his former attorney, Michael Cohen, is expected to testify Monday. Cohen's testimony indicates the prosecution is reaching the home stretch of its case nearly a month after this trial began. He's expected to testify that Trump understood that records related to reimbursement checks to Cohen would be falsified in order to cover up the fact that they were tied to the purchase of Stormy Daniels' story. Trump has entered a not guilty plea and denies having a sexual encounter with Daniels. This morning, the family of a U.S. airman is pushing for answers after new body cam video shows he was shot to death by a Florida sheriff's deputy at his own doorstep. Roger Fortson can be seen in his home holding a gun pointed down when he opened the door. Initial reports from the sheriff's office say he acted in self-defense, but Fortson's family says the deputy went to the wrong apartment. Tell the truth about my baby. My baby was not going to hurt you. My baby was not in the wrong. I want to assure you that we are not hiding, covering up, or taking action that would result in a rush to judgment of Mr. Fortson or our deputy. The deputy who pulled the trigger has been placed on administrative leave. Meanwhile, back here at home, Governor Sanders is calling on governors across the country, along with Arkansas lawmakers, to limit children's access to social media and an effort in which she believes will help the mental health crisis with kids driven by social media. Sanders sent a copy of a book called The Anxious Generation to every U.S. governor, along with a letter encouraging them to promote outdoor play in order to combat America's mental health crisis. And we're taking a closer look, though, into Little Rock School District's board discussions over whether to join a lawsuit against social media giants. The plaintiffs allege the companies are hurting kids and are seeking accountability. A South Carolina law firm is gathering complaints from around the country to go head to head against the biggest social media companies. They say TikTok, Meta and Snapchat are having detrimental effects on kids. Now they are looking at the Little Rock School District to come on board. What we were told by health experts was that there is um, a, a difference, that there is no causal relationship, no direct causal relationship between social media at this time and, mm -hmm. and, and mental health issues. The board members have tabled a discussion for a future meeting. The law firm says they do not have a deadline for when the schools need to make a decision. They also won't make LRSD pay anything unless they win. If that happens, the law firm will get a portion of what the court awarded them. On this Mother's Day weekend, we're taking a closer look at one mother's life-saving gift for her child. Tom? Oh, it's a beautiful afternoon out there. Just a few of those uh, fair weather cumulus clouds. We'll see them in and out throughout the day today, but drier conditions, humidity values are lower, temperatures in the mid 70s, absolutely gorgeous. I've got the rest of your Mother's Day weekend forecast when we come back.